What's up everyone? So we got a pretty cool saw here today. We got the Evolution Power Tools 15 amp 10 inch sliding compound miter saw. It's not only gonna cut through wood, we're gonna cut through steel with this thing. Will it really cut through everything we put it through? Well, we're gonna find out. Model number R255SMS. Let's get it started. So you're probably wondering why this video is a little bit longer. Well, it's because I beat the hell out of the saw. Now, believe it or not, this saw is only $205. You're supposed to be able to cut through wood, decking, metal, laminate, plastic, all that fun stuff. I'm gonna show you all the specs on this. I'm gonna show you how it runs. We're gonna embed some nails in some pine. We're gonna go through some steel. We're gonna see what this thing will do. Will it hold up? Really cool features on this as well. You know, when you get your hands on it, it feels like an old school saw, but that's what I like about it. I will show you all of that, but let's talk about assembly and specs. The only thing you really gotta do is put the blade on. You do have to attach the top assembly, the motor area, and you have to put your rails in. It literally only takes about five minutes though. You do have a blade lock right here. It's a brushed motor. You also get a laser on this thing, so that's pretty cool. You can come down here, you can slide it, got a really nice slide on it. You can tighten it down right there like so. It comes up by itself, so that's really nice. All in all, this thing is not heavy at all. Oh, look at about 36 pounds. You do have a depth stop right here. You can adjust that simply by screwing that in, bringing that lever down. So that's a nice little option right there. Again, you can lock your slide, your glide, your rails right there. They glide real easy. So I was really happy about that. As far as those knobs go, not the most heavy duty I've ever seen, but they're not all that bad. You do got your miter right here. You can go left or right. You got your positive stops, nine positive stops all together. Go up to 50 degrees. You do have the sliding fence over here. You can tighten those down. Yes, you can cut a four by four on this, by the way, in case I forget later in the video. We'll show you all that. Tighten those down, don't have to worry about those going anywhere. Now on the back here, if you want to bevel it, just loosen it up a little bit and then bevel to the left. You cannot go to the right, only to the left. But glide's really nice, real simple to do, not heavy at all. Once you find it, you can lock it down. Then you got a positive stop right here on the back. You do have a cord wind on the back of the unit, which is a nice little touch. I like stuff like that. You do have a dust collector bag. You can also put in the attachment by removing the dust collector bag adding the attachment and then a vacuum to this. Now I will tell you right out of the gate, I did forget to zipper the dust collector bag, but I'm thinking that's a good thing because I was cutting metal and I probably would have burned a hole in the back. So, you know, things work out. Now here is one of the things that I really like about this saw and it's one of the smallest features of any saw you get. That is the actual clamp itself. These are the type of clamps that I like. I wish Rigid and all those other saws would go back to this style so much easier to adjust them instead of you know cranking these things down all the way you can actually push that button and it's a fast release look at that i really wish that all the other manufacturers would go back to these styles you know another cool feature about this is check out the bottom of it it will actually hold in your rounded metal so i really really like this clamp and it seems to do a very good job keeping that material secure now you also have a laser right here. You can turn it on simply by pushing this little lever. I'll show you a close up look. A little hard to see in the daylight, but it is very bright when you're working indoors. Me personally, I like the light better. You can see that blade coming down, the shadow of it, but it is what it is. I like the laser as well. You can also see that you have the raised degree markings right here. They're not etched in, they're not plastic. I like that. FYI, everything on the saw, it was dialed in very nicely. I did not have to adjust anything. Everything was square, so that was good. Now, I suspect that most of the cutting is due to the blade, being able to cut through the steel, the wood, the nail embedded wood and all that. So really, if you were to put this blade on any saw, it would probably work just fine for you. For the replacement blades, you're looking about $35. You also get that little wrench right here. You can take that blade off. You can tighten it. You can adjust anything on this saw with that. But yeah, as far as it goes with the blade itself, we did have one issue. I will show you that here. 
towards the end of the video. All you gotta do is pull the trigger and it's ready. Let's take a listen. Now in case you didn't notice the soft start. It definitely has a soft start and it, I think personally it's a little bit overkill but yes it is a soft start. So what we're going to do is we're just going to try to cut down through some regular pine wood. We'll see how it does. Once we do that we will throw some nails in this, some framing nails and we'll see how that cuts down through. Let's check it out. Now, even though it cut down through that board very smooth, the blade itself, I can feel a little rumbling in it. You know, it's not as smooth as I thought it would be. Now, FYI, towards the end of the video, I will show you why I think I was having those issues. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like this or not, but I will show you the issue that I found. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna throw in some nails on this pine wood here, and we're gonna see what it does. If it can go down through all of these framing nails, now we have quite a few of them in there, probably looking at 11, plus some of the other ones that I put in from a previous clip, but uh, yeah, let's see what it does. Now that's pretty damn impressive. I gotta be honest with you, I think it actually goes through better with the metal in it than just a regular pine for some reason. I don't know if it's because of that saw blade, but look, that is a completely smooth cut. That's pretty impressive. That's really impressive. So yeah, I like that a lot, but we're gonna kick it up a notch here. All right, let's move on to this gnarly four by four, just so I can show you that it actually does cut down all the way through here. It does seem like the gnarlier the material, the better the sink cut. So yeah, it definitely will go down through a treated four by four. All right, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this one eighth inch thick piece of steel and we're gonna try to cut down through it. I gotta be honest with you, I'm a little nervous about this because I don't really cut steel on miter saws so let's try it out we'll see what it does here so there you go right i mean that's pretty impressive i mean that is really impressive that it cut down so well through that piece of steel now I had mentioned in the beginning, you know, the blade is doing most of the work, but you also have to have a pretty powerful saw. You're looking at 2,500 RPM to be able to cut through that metal. I'll tell you what, it went through really quick. So yeah, wow. Okay, yeah, nice. Now in this part of the video is where I tried to attempt to cut through 1 8 inch angle iron. Word of advice, don't try to cut through angle iron. Check this out. Listen, here's the deal. I found that you only want to cut metal that is rounded or has some type of rounded edge because that blade will catch up. That was not fun, so I ain't doing that no more. So I wanted to throw some other pieces of metal on there. Right here, this is stainless steel pipe. We're gonna go down through this. And again, that clamp really shines. It'll hold that pipe down. I actually should have tightened it a little bit more than what I did. I thought I had it all the way down. It wanted to move on me a little bit, but I'll show you what it does. And, you know, again, <laughs> I was really nervous to cut this after that angle. Because it's rounded, I think I'm going to You can see that bar wanting to move a little bit while I'm cutting it, so I'm just going to risk it with it. And there you go, that was actually really easy to get through. You know, other than that moving a little bit, you can see right there, I can tighten it down a little bit more and it, it would hold it in there. All right, let's try some three quarter inch steel pipe. Same thing, we're gonna go right through. We're gonna take a slow, I clamp it down a little bit more, but uh, let's check it out. Very nervous at this point.
go through super, super easy. So the one thing I have noticed when I'm cutting with this, if it is a rounded edge, you're fine. If it is flat, you're fine. Angle iron, no. Now, for how well this actually cut through the steel, there is one issue that I found with this, and I'm not sure if it's an issue or not, but if you've ever used one of these, let me know if you notice this as well. The blade actually wobbles a little bit. You can see that when it starts out, it will start to go a little bit, but not only that. Check this out. The arbor will actually move about a sixteenth of an inch. It's not the blade actually bending. You can actually move this back and forth now i've tried tightening this down but that doesn't do anything you can see it will actually move that arbor out about a sixteenth of an inch it's crazy now again i am not sure if that is a design feature but i don't think it's supposed to be like that i've never had a saw do this to me before i'm curious to know what you think if you've ever used one of these if you've ever had that issue let me know in the comments section below now at the end of the day it cut down through just about everything i wanted it to cut down through the motor is really powerful and i like all the little features especially that clamp on here everything's really easy to use on that but with that blade wobble and it is noticeable i don't know if i can recommend this saw not until i can find out if it can be tightened down which i could not find a way or if that is the way it's supposed to be designed it could be possible that that is purposely made that way to, I don't know, help reduce some of the stress. But I highly, seriously doubt that. As far as it goes with the bevel and everything else, for $200, it's really impressive, especially for the power that you get. Again, a lot of the work is being done with the blade. The blade is $35 for this saw as a replacement. It does come with one. But again, I'm curious to hear what you think. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. If you like this video, thumbs up, subscribe. Check us out at ToolReviewZone.com. Come over to the Instagram page and say hi, ToolReviewZone. And we'll be back with more videos soon.